Good morning, grade 11. Wednesday, the 3rd of June. The time is coming closer for me to see you in my classroom. I'm so excited. Right, so we are going on with track. So up to now, we have done the Cartesian plane. We have done the special angles. We have done the reduction formulas. We have done the negative angles. So add 360, get there again. We have looked at trig identities. Tan can be rewritten as sine over cos. Okay. Today, we are going to add to our little crypt notes here. Okay. Today, we are going to look at complementary angles. Now, what is complementary angles? Now, in maths, we talk about co-functions. Now, that's 90 plus and 90 minus. So, on my crypt notes, there's my 90. So, my 90 minus theta is in my first quadrant. Okay. What do I know about everything in my first quadrant? They will all be positive. That means that when I have to do 90 plus theta, where am I going to move into? I'm going to move into my second quadrant. Okay. So, what is the purpose of a co-function? So, when I have 90 minus theta, or I have 90 plus theta, sine must change to cos, or cos must change to sine. The question is, will it change with a negative added, or will it remain positive? So we're going to look at that. Okay. So whenever I have 90 minus or 90 plus, if it was given as sine, it needs to change to cos. If it was given as cos, it needs to change to sine. Okay. So we're first going to start off and we're going to look at 90 minus theta which means that is working in my first quadrant. Now, you can draw it in the first quadrant. I just used a simple triangle so that you can see. So what did I do? I said I have a right angle triangle, A, B, C. Angle B is 90 degrees, angle C is theta. And that means... I want to zoom a little bit so that you can see. That means that A will be 90 minus theta. So if I label my sides, so I can label it across or opposite the angle, angle A, I get side A. Angle B will give me side B. Angle C will give me side C. Or I can just use side AB, side BC, or side AC. Okay, so if I highlight theta, in terms of theta, that is my adjacent side, that is my hypotenuse, that is my opposite. So if I work out sine theta, I get O over H, which is AB over AC or C over B. If I work out cos of theta, I get A over H, which is BC over AC or A over B. What happens if I change the focus to 90 minus theta? So in terms of 90 minus theta, side AB will then become A, and side, o, uh, side BC will become the opposite and my hypotenuse stay. 
So if I have sine 90 minus theta, O over H is BC over AC, or that. Cos is A over H, AB over AC. Now what, why did I do that? I wanted to show you that the answer I got for sine theta is exactly the answer I got for cos 90 minus theta. The answer I got for cos theta is exactly the answer I got for sine minus uh, uh, sine 90 minus theta. So what deduction can I make? So if they gave me cos 90 minus theta, I can write it as sine theta. If they gave me sine 90 minus theta, I can write it as cos theta. Okay. So, what am I adding to my crip notes? My crip notes, I know that sine 90 minus theta is cos theta and cos 90 minus theta is sine theta. Okay, so everything happens in my first quadrant. Now, let's have a look. So if I say sine of 10 without using a calculator, I can write it as it's acute. Okay, so I'm staying in the first quadrant. So instead of saying sine 10, I can say sine 90 minus 80. And because I am using sine 90 minus, 90 minus means sine will change to cos and I will use the 80. So if I have sine 20, it means I have sine 90 minus 70. And because I use 90 minus, Sine will change to cos of 70. Now let's have a look on our calculators. So if I say sine of 10, I get 0, 0,173. Okay? So if I say cos of 80, I get the same answer. I can do the same. If I say sine of 20, 0, 0.342. What if I say cos of 70? 0 0.342. It's exactly the same. So I did here two more. So if I have cos of 80, it's saying cos 90 minus 10. The 90 minus changes cos to sine of 10. Cos of 60 is cos 90 minus 30 and because I am using 90 minus cos will change to sine and then I have 30. Okay, not that bad. Now we're going to move to the third quadrant. Okay, and what do I know about the third quadrant? I know that anything with sine originally in it will be positive. So if I have sine 100, okay, I can say 100 minus 80. Normal reduction angle, right? For uh, Not angle, reduction formula. I can say sine is 180 minus 80. And in 180 minus Sine is positive, so sine of 80. Okay, now if I use co-functions, it means that if I have sine 80, I will have cos of 10. If I use 90, okay, I will now have to say 90 plus. 
Okay, now the moment I use 90 minus or 90 plus, sine must change to cos and cos must change to sine. But here I need to be careful because only the original sine will be positive. So in 90 plus, sine was positive. Sign will change to positive cos of 10. Now what if I give you cos? So cos of 180, uh, cos of 100, I can use reduction formula. I can say 180 minus 80. At 180 minus, what do I know about cos? It is negative cos of 80, which means it will be negative sine of 10. But if I use co-functions, 90 plus, what do I know about cos in the original 90 plus quadrant? In my original 90 plus quadrant, sine was positive. So cos will be negative in there, sine of 10. Okay. So let's look at some examples before I give you your homework. Okay, so I've got my cheat sheet here. That's what I call it. I have studied it off by heart so I can write it down before I start with anything. Okay, so 90 plus, what do I know? I need to change from cos to sine. But what do I know about cos in the second quadrant? It was or will become negative sine of theta. And then I have 360 minus. 360 minus cos was positive. So what do I know about sine? It will become negative sine of theta. And that is equal to 1. All right, next one. So what if I try to make it a little bit more difficult? Okay, so I have 360 minus. So I know that will become negative sine theta. 90 plus. Okay, so it's in my second quadrant. Sine lives there, so it will become cos of theta. 90 minus, it's in my first quadrant, so everything is positive and cos will change to sine. 360 minus, cos is positive, so that will become cos of theta. Okay, and now I have one term over one term, simplified, cos will cancel, sine will cancel, my answer is not zero, my answer is negative. One. Right, I hope that you can work through these examples by yourself. Your homework for today is exercise 7.6, the numbers in 2 and 3 and 4 that I've highlighted there. Right, have a nice day, grade 11s.